In this video, I'm going to walk teachers through Unit 5, Day 16, the Truman Doctrine and Marshall Plan lesson. This is a lesson is the beginning of the mini unit on the Cold War. Um, so there is going to be a lot of content and vocabulary that you'll want to review with students so that they have the right amount of context for their work today. One of the notes in this lesson is that you can um, shift the lesson to be more of a discussion with students, have them um, look at different texts and then jigsaw so that they can share what they learn with each other. Today, they're gonna evaluate the conditions and contributing factors leading up to the Cold War. So we're really looking at the beginning of the tensions between um, the US and NATO and the Soviet Union or the Warsaw Pact. So students are gonna start by looking at this map. You can uh, have students look at it more closely or zoomed in if they click on this link down here. And this video is going to give you a few answers to the questions. So as they're looking at this map, it's pretty straightforward. They don't have, um, there's no mention of NATO. There's no mention of um, like U.S. allies. We're really just looking at the Eastern Bloc or the Soviet allies, which they might not even be able to infer without any context. So some, some things that students might see is that Europe was divided. Um, the divisions lasted until like 1989, which is going to be a long time. And Russia and other countries in the East were part of the Eastern Bloc. And that, they don't, might not know what that means yet, um, but those are some observations that they can see. Some inferences that they might be able to make are that the, the, the continent of Europe was divided between the West and the East. They might be able to infer that these countries in gray were uh, allied with each other. Um, they might be able to infer, if they know more, that the countries in red were communist or that they were the um, Cold War opponents of the United States. So, so those are some inferences that they can make. There are a few slides here of content, um, and it is important to go over this because it's kind of the beginning of the Cold War. There was one lesson which in, in the previous unit which touched on what was going to come around the atomic weapons, but um, here's where they're getting most of their content. It's also important to remember that Europe is really in ruins because it's going to set up the Truman Doctrine and the Marshall Plan to understand that these countries were facing destitution because of the uh, damage done during the war. And here you're going to here you are going to mention the communist governments, and that connects to the map that students looked at at the beginning. On this slide, you're going to start modeling the work that students are going to do in their independence section. Students are going to look at a document and answer a, a corresponding question. So here, um, you should read this with your students together. And um, this is from Truman's speech, continues here. And then there is a single question, according to Truman, why should the US assist European countries such as Greece and Turkey? So in this video, I'm giving you some answers um, to those questions. And here it says Truman wanted to support the countries in their fight against imposed totalitarian regimes. He knows that other nations such as Poland, Romania, and Bulgaria had already had totalitarian regimes forced on them. Um, and so that is his reasoning and wanting to support countries like Greece and Turkey. Okay, next you're gonna have students get started on their own, just like you did there. They're going to look at five texts and answer a single question for each of them. Again, this is the place where you can jigsaw it. So divide up the text and then have students come back together to see what they learned. Um, as they're reading each of these, they should be thinking about how the leader's speech or proposed policy contributed to the conditions that led to the Cold War, which they will then synthesize in the wrap-up and check for understanding at the end of the lesson. Uh, here are just some answers. I'm not going to read each document. You can definitely do that. But how did Stalin's 1946 speech contribute to Cold War tensions? Well, Stalin pronounced capitalism as a threat, which would lead to violence and proclaimed that the Soviets needed to prepare and sacrifice to meet that threat. One thing about this document is that it's a lot of quotes inside of quotes, and so it can be a little bit difficult to understand. But in general, this document is simply describing what Stalin was saying in his um, end of war speech. Um, in the next section, which is actually simply a continuation of the same um, the same resource, which is linked in down here. It asks, according to Kennan, what should the US do to oppose Soviet expansion? And this is where the students are really gonna be talking about containment, which is a big vocabulary word for the Cold War. So Kennan proposed the US policy of containment, which meant working to limit the spread of Soviet power without taking any rash action against the Soviets directly. And you'll notice I am putting these in my own words, which is something that students really should be trying to do and not just copying words that they don't uh, necessarily understand from the document. Um, 
For uh, text three, which is again is a continuation of the same document as the previous two, the question is what was the Iron Curtain as described by Churchill? Iron Curtain is another one of those big vocabulary words for the Cold War. And the Iron Curtain was a metaphor for the division across Europe. On the western side lay the capitalist countries that supported the U.S. and NATO, and on the eastern side lay the Soviet allies, or the, the Soviet Union, or the Warsaw Pact. So, and text four is two slides, so it's a long, uh, longer speech from Truman in 1947. The question is, according to Truman, why did the U.S. have the responsibility to support free people? Um, and the answer here could, could be Truman believed that it was every person's right to have a voice in their government and to not be forced into following a system. He believed that without freedom of speech and press, people lose their choice. There are other answers that it could be. And the final question um, discusses the Marshall Plan, which was proposed by George C. Marshall, another vocabulary word of the Cold War. Um, and it asks, why did the U.S. pass the Economic Cooperation Act or Marshall Plan to support Western Europe? And based on the previous texts, as well as this one, the U.S. passed the Marshall Plan to help countries rebuild without the aid of the Soviets. This would help them contain communism and keep countries allied to the U.S. So again, um, talking about containment, talking about the Marshall Plan, the Truman Doctrine, um, and the Cold War. So there are a variety of answers students come up, can come up with here. Um, but they should be thinking about the tensions and beliefs that contributed to the start of the Cold War in the end of in the end of the 1940s um, and right after the right after World War II. And this is a place where you can have students come together after looking at individual texts um, to jigsaw and discuss uh, what they find. And the check for understanding is simply putting these ideas into their own words and, and analyzing these vocabulary terms. Um, you might introduce or have them also look at containment or Iron Curtain here, but um, the Truman Doctrine and the Marshall Plan uh, were the starting, starting events of the Cold War or starting policies of the Cold War.